Today on RUTV, we take a closer look at Marvel's new show, WandaVision. And then we talk about the road to Tampa. And later, we take a look at this wild week in politics. Don't look away because it all starts right now on RUTV. Good morning, Seahawks. Today's Friday, the 22nd, and I'm Bella Hines. And I'm Tatum Brown. Here are your school announcements. If you haven't already, please take the survey from RUHS Admin. The form can be found in your school email. As you probably know, Semester 1 finals are next week. Please remember to adhere to the finals week schedule. And don't forget to be well rested and eat a healthy breakfast so you're prepared to tackle your exams. Also, please see the flyer for information about upcoming baseball tryouts. The flyer can be found in your school email. Now let's go to Sophia with the latest and greatest in entertainment. Thanks, Bella. Hello, everyone. I'm Sophia Roberts, and this is your entertainment news. A new Disney Plus and Marvel series, WandaVision, starring Elizabeth Olsen and Paul Bettany, was released last Friday the 15th. The series follows superheroes Wanda Maximoff and Vision from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Leaving idealized suburban lives, the pair seem to realize that not everything is as it seems. The first two episodes have already been released, and over the course of the next seven weeks, one episode will be released per week, totaling to nine episodes in this season. And other new 17-year-old actress Olivia Rodrigo, as seen in shows High School Musical The Musical and Bizarre Bark, has released a new song called Driver's License, which has seen immediate success. The song, which is very emotional, has beat many records, one being in the UK for the most streamed song in one day, and she also beat the Spotify record for most streamed song in one day, not including Christmas music. The song has been really popular over social media apps as well, such as TikTok, which has helped introduce the song to many different people. That's all for entertainment news. Now let's go to Karma with politics. Thanks, Sophia. This is Karma Sarni with National News. Joe Biden was inaugurated as the 46th president of the United States this Wednesday, January 20th. Following the raid on the Capitol, the FBI issued a warning of armed protests during the days leading up to and on Inauguration Day. On Wednesday, 25,000 National Guard members patrolled the streets of Washington, D.C., more than four times the number of troops in Iraq and Afghanistan combined. The aforementioned armed protests, however, did not come together. Any and all gatherings, some of which included armed protesters, were small and ultimately peaceful. Biden's inauguration speech emphasized unity, making a plea to a divided American people to hear each other out and refrain from violence. Kamala Harris was sworn in as the first woman, first black person, and first Asian American to ever hold the office of vice president. There will be a virtual celebration for the inauguration featuring performances from communities in all 50 states and six territories. That's all for politics, and now back to Tatum. As the COVID-19 vaccine is becoming more open to the public, some people in Southern California are finding it difficult to receive the vaccine. Vaccination sites are being overwhelmed with people trying to get the vaccine who did not make appointments, causing them to shut down. They are trying to prioritize those in the higher risk group, but the vaccine has a limited time frame where it is still good. However, there are still plenty of vaccines being given out to those who sign up for it. Now to Bella Hines with a special segment about Mr. Ziegler's award. As many of you know, our yearbook staff had been working online to produce our 2020 pilot. The Journalism Education Association has awarded Redondo Union's very own Mr. Ziegler the title of HL National Advisor of the Year 2020. The award recognizes Mr. Ziegler's hard work throughout the challenging 2020, but also his whole career. One name says it all. Hey, Mr. Ziegler. Mitch. Hey, Mitch. Hi, Ziggly Puff. Hey, Mr. Ziegler. Mitch Ziegler.
I just want to thank you for everything that you did for me as far as yearbook and you're really helping me finding my creativity and my passion for film. Year after year, your yearbooks have inspired me and so many staffs across the United States. Some of my favorite memories as an advisor have been shared and experienced with you and they're moments that I'll cherish forever. You have been an innovator in our field. Your kids have done stuff that nobody's kids have done and you've been the one that has made that all possible for them. Without you, I definitely still would be pursuing design still, so I appreciate you so much. You are one of my favorite teachers. Uh, thank you for the four years that you were able to get to know me and work with me. I've always valued your passion for journalism, but I especially value and respect the investment that you make in your students every day. You looked out for me so much on the human level. You really took care of me, you looked out for me, and you made sure I was doing okay in one of the hardest years of my life. I am so psyched for you and so excited. I'm so proud of you. Congratulations, Mitch. Congratulations on Advisor of the Year. So well deserved. Congratulations, my yearbook bro. Congrats on winning the 2020 Yearbook Advisor of the Year Award. Yeah, congrats, Mitch. You deserve it. We love you so much. Maybe now that you have this award, you can finally replace that terrible photo of me in your classroom. <laughs> you did it. Congrats to Mr. Ziegler and keep up the hard work. Now let's go to Travis with sports. Thanks, Karma. Hi, everyone. I'm Travis Wilkins, and we're down to the final two weeks of football after the divisional round concluded this past Sunday. Now let's go ahead and take a look at who's going to be playing this weekend for their shot at the Super Bowl. On Sunday, both the AFC and NFC Championship game will be played. First, Tom Brady and the Buccaneers are headed up north to face Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers in the NFC Championship. The last time these two teams met, the Buccaneers gave the Packers their only double-digit loss of the year. Brady already knocked off one legend last week in Drew Brees, so will we see him do it again? Or will we see Rodgers knock off the GOAT and stroll his way into his second Super Bowl? I guess we'll just have to wait and see. This game will be played in Green Bay at 12.05 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Now on to Sunday night, we have the Buffalo Bills taking on the Kansas City Chiefs in Kansas City. When these teams faced off in October, the Chiefs won easily, but the Bills right now are riding an eight-game win streak. The Chiefs are looking forward to getting their star quarterback Patrick Mahomes back after a concussion scare that resulted in him leaving the game last week. This game features two MVP candidates and two explosive offenses and will take place at 3.40 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Now, jumping into some NBA news, a blockbuster trade has just gone down. The Brooklyn Nets have received James Harden from the Houston Rockets in a four-team trade, all without having to give up Kyrie Irving. Though they didn't have to give up Kyrie, the Nets still did have to give up their young core in Karis LeVert and Jared Allen, along with a handful of future draft picks. Houston, on the other hand, received star point guard Victor Oladipo from the Pacers, as well as draft picks in every year up until 2027. Now, I know this seems like a lot for James Harden, especially when you already have KD and Kyrie, but Harden has posted up two 30-point performances in his first two games with the Nets, so things seem to be going up fine so far. Now, it's time for an all-new Brant time. Happy Friday, Seahawks. It's Mr. Brant, your very proud principal. Miss all of you, as always, and I hope you're staying safe and healthy. As you can see, I'm geared up today. I really enjoy uh, running into all of you in the neighborhood uh, with your Seahawk gear on. Uh, again, our, our teachers, our staff, our counselors, our coach, our administrators, everyone really misses having you on campus. And uh, we continue to hope that things will get better and we'll have you back on campus sooner rather than later. In the meantime, congratulations on making it to the end of the first semester. We wish you all the best on your exams next week or any final projects or papers that you need to turn in. This is a great time to really push forward with turning in all of your missing assignments, any missing work that you have, and that you get your grades up to the highest grade possible. Uh, we congratulate you on making it through half of the school year, it's hard to believe. And then starting on February 1st, when you have an asynchronous day, that'll be Monday, uh, you will not be interacting with your teachers live, but you will have assignments to do. And then on February 2nd, that Tuesday, you will start with periods two, four, and six. So again, Seahawks, stay well, stay healthy, and congratulations on making it halfway through the school year. We appreciate all of you. Take care. Here's your fun fact brought to you by the Beach Buddies Club. Did you know that green turtles can migrate more than 1,400 miles to lay their eggs? 
and that penguins fly underwater at up to 25 miles per hour? There will be no RUTV next week, and if you're interested in joining, please stay on the lookout for updates. That's all for this week's broadcast. I'm Bella Hines. And I'm Tatum Brown. Have a great weekend, and keep, keep on, on soaring, Seahawks. Seahawks.